Hi, Coach. I wanted to ask, it's been a difficult adjustment going from Zierra King, you know, who's so mobile and a dual threat, to Tyler Van Dyke, who's more of a pro-style quarterback. I wanted to ask, has it been challenging adjusting the play calls from Zierra to Tyler? Um, I mean, I think the, the challenge is you just learn in the new quarterback. And I think um, it, it's not as much that, you know, one's more of a dual threat and one's not, although, you know, Tyler's done some good things with his legs. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've been fortunate to coach both kinds of guys and both fit in what we do. I think it's just been more learning. Each quarterback has kind of their own, you know, their own strengths, their own comfort zones. You get used to them, you know, you know what play calls they're best at in certain situations. Um, and then I think there's the, probably just the chemistry with the guys they're playing with too. And so when you try to build your offense in the direction of one quarterback strengths and, you know, you lose that quarterback, you bring in a new guy, you can start to learn and build around what he does well. But not only are you learning him and is he kind of getting comfortable, but the the guys around him are kind of learning him too and, and maybe starting to do some things a little bit differently than maybe they were doing with the other guys. So, um, you know, I think it's been a, it's been a good process. Tyler's been great. He's um, – you know, he's been improving, I think, each week. And I think, you know, at times we've started to kind of find that rhythm of what that should look like. Um, so hopefully we can continue to get more consistent. Coach, we've got Susan Miller-Degnan from the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, two, two areas. One on the, on the running back situation. Um, what do you lose without having Cam? And um, obviously, how do you divide up the snaps now? And what did you think of Jalen? And as far as uh, Tyler goes, Manny Diaz said he can really wing the ball. He has a really strong arm. Uh, but, you know, we saw there were there were some overthrows, some balls that weren't really accurately thrown. Is that do you think that's a lack of experience or nerves or what what's the reason? Uh, yeah, to the running back question, um, you know, obviously losing Cam, you know, we've lost probably two of our, our top three veteran guys coming into the season now. So and Cam had the most experience. Um, you lose a lot with Cam in terms of the experience in pass protection and just, um, you know, especially when you got a young quarterback in there. I mean, Cam knows the pass protections, you know, at this point to the level that, you know, if, if Tyler knows him too, but if he ever needed any help, I mean, Cam would be able to assist there. But just, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into it other than just running the football. So you lose that experience. You lose the depth. Um, you know, and you just hate it for Cam just like you did for Don to lose two – uh, guys who were expecting to have a great season. And uh, fortunately for us, you know, we do have Jalen. I thought Jalen played really well the other day. Um, you know, we got Cody Brown and Thad Franklin. So, um, you know, those will be the three guys that uh, are getting the bulk of the work now. And I think, you know, Jalen's got the most experience. He's explosive. He did some really good things. And uh, I think, you know, Cody's got his feet wet this year. And, and you'll see him and Thad now down the stretch as well. Uh, with regards to the quarterback question, um, yeah, you know, I think probably early in a game, it could be more nerves. Um, I think some of it is just experience. And, um, you know, he settled down, I think, in both of the last two games as the games have gone on. He's gotten better. Um, <clears throat> you know, in both games, the, the opponent did a really good job of early in the game showing some looks that were a little unique to what they had done. And so maybe some things it's, you know, we hadn't been able to show him or prepare him for as well. And uh, I thought, you know, as the game went on, he adjusted nicely. Um, but I think Tyler would be the first to tell you he can make some of the throws he's been missing. And, uh, you know, I look for him to start making those um, you know, on a more consistent basis as the season goes on. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Coach, we'll go to Chris Stock at Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I remember earlier this year you had talked about maybe not targeting specific players, um, kind of just philosophy-wise. And I was just wondering, saying that again, just, again, Will Mallory just can't, you know, just not being as productive as you guys hope. And, and then Mike Harley as well, just not as productive as he was a year ago. Is there any thought of, of getting those guys um, going? Is there ways that you can get them guys going? Um, or is this just kind of the production you expect the rest of the way? Uh, no, I think I think there is. I think, you know, it's stuff that doesn't show up, show up in the stat sheet with regards to Mike Harley. I mean, I think we targeted Mike down the field several times and, and either the ball was tipped away or, you know, knocked down or pass interference or whatever may have you. Um, there was a couple times he was probably um, going to be the primary guy and, and on a third down scenario where they, we got some pressure. So, you know, if a guy only has three or four catches, it's always easy to say, hey, you're not targeting a guy, but he may have been targeted, you know, 10 times throughout the game. And some games, 
those guys get seven or eight of those targets. Some games it doesn't go that way. You also got a new quarterback that, um, you know, is getting adjusted to those guys. And so sometimes you may call a play and it, it goes to someone else, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, we want to keep Mike going. Uh, I think Xavier Strepo does a good job too. So um, there's no intentionality to not get him going. And, uh, you know, we fully expect him to continue to make plays and, and hopefully even more than maybe say we're made Saturday, but uh, and get more opportunities his way. With regards to Will, you know, I thought Will made a really good play on the slant and, and got a first down for us. That was good to see. And, um, you know, just the way the game plan went, yeah, there was opportunities for Will. We threw it, tried to throw him the ball in the end zone. Uh, again, you know, sometimes the, the stat sheet isn't going to show the production that maybe certain guys want, but... We're trying to get the right guys the ball. We're going to continue to do it. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll continue to improve and, and, you know, get more results out of it. Coach, we got Kobe Price from the Sun Sentinel. Kobe, go ahead. Hey, Rhett, how you doing? Hey, Kobe. Wanted to, uh, we talked to many about this too, about, you know, getting Tyler a little calmer to start games. I guess, have you been in the position before as a coach where, you know, you got to get the quarterback, I guess, be more relaxed and just, kind of like a spark plug of confidence. Uh, I guess, what do you do in that situation to help him become more confident in himself? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every game we're going to go into the game trying to get the quarterback off to a good start. Uh, it doesn't matter who you're playing with, and we're going to try to get our guys the ball and those touches and those things. Um, you know, this last game was a little unique. We, we decided we kind of took a shot the first play with a little flea flicker, um, had had the secondary option open, and we just missed it. And, you um, you know, then we get behind the sticks in third and long, and, and it just didn't go the way we wanted. We knew that was a possibility if we were going to be aggressive on the opening play. But, um, yeah, I mean, the more, like I said, to, I think the first question, the more, you know, get more comfortable learning what he likes the most and he gets more comfortable and, you know, saying, hey, how can we maybe try to get off to a, a better start? Absolutely. That's going to be the goal every game. And so uh, I don't think there's any question, you know, the first four drives he scored three points. It, it's hard to – we're not helping our team out. We're not helping the defense out when we start that way and start so slow and get in a hole. And um, so we're, uh, you know, we're definitely trying to find ways to to get ourselves offensively ignited a lot sooner than we have been. Coach, we've got Manny Navarro from The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Hey, Red. So hey, man. Um, we saw uh, Jake Garcia obviously made the trip. I saw him with his boot. And I know Coach mentioned maybe you get him back some point in, in November. Um, is there any chance he could start practice around that time or is it, you know, maybe be available for a game? And then I know this is sort of a, if not, you know, maybe this could have happened, but had Jake been healthy, would he have definitely been somebody playing along with Tyler here uh, over these last couple of games? Yeah, it's great questions. You know, um, <clears throat> we traveled Jake, even though he's not ready to play yet, just because, you know, he's a true freshman that he, he'd never been in a road environment. So, I think sometimes getting those guys in those environments is good. And and there is the chance that, you know, he's kind of week to week. I can't, I can't give you a date because they haven't given me one. Um, but it's not outside the possibility that he could be available before the season's over. So with that being the reason, we just felt like getting him in those atmospheres, keeping him engaged with the team, keeping him kind of his mind in a game plan mode was the best thing to do. Um, if, and, if that's a possibility as the season goes on. Uh, with regards to your second question, you know, when we lost the Eric, uh, our plan against Central Connecticut was to start Tyler and to play both Tyler and Jake. Um, I thought they both did really well in that game. Um, so had he been healthy, we would have probably taken a similar approach to the Virginia game and started Tyler, uh, with, but tried to play them both and just, you know, kind of see how it played itself out. And, uh, you know, obviously without Jake being available, it's kind of hard to say how it would play out. But uh, we got a lot of faith in both those guys. And, you know, right now our whole team's really rallied behind Tyler. Coach, last one for you. We're going to go back to Susan Miller, Degnan of the Herald. Susan, go ahead. Hey, Rhett. Uh, this one is on the NC State's uh, defense. You see yeah. the first in the nation and third down conversion defense and 13th in passes intercepted, 11th in rushing defense, they, just on and on. Very good defense. What kind of challenge is that going to be for Tyler and for the offense? Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're a really good group, you know. Um, we obviously started the season off with a really good defense, but these next two weeks we're playing, you know, arguably two of the top defenses in our league. And like you said with NC State, I mean, you could kind of get – kind of gets old saying all their incredible stats. I mean, they're they're giving up 90 rushing yards a game, which is incredible. They're giving up 14 points a game, which is incredible. They're, they're like you said, first against uh, third down, I think it's like 25%. Mm -hmm. uh, they turn you over. 
they're a veteran group. You know, we played them there last year. A lot of these guys are back. Uh, maybe two guys were missing from that game due to injury. And, um, you know, so they, they really know their scheme. I think it's their second or third year in the system. It's a really unique scheme. It's an odd stack scheme, which, um, you know, a lot of people don't play that anymore. And so, you know, we think we said this a year ago, it's a unique scheme. Those guys know that scheme so well. They do a great job of <clears throat> with that scheme really stopping the run as their stats show you. But, I mean, they're only giving up 200 yards a game and passing as well because when you're in that odd scheme, you, you really are able to fit the run in a way that still, once you read pass, gives you an extra defender underneath against the pass. And they do a really, really good job mixing up those looks. Um, it won't be easy for any quarterback, much less a, a guy making his fourth start. So we have a great challenge for us there. Um, but, hey, uh, that's that's what we expect every week in our league is, is a really good challenge. And, um, you know, we got to get off to a better start early. And, um, you know, we got to find a way to uh, to be consistent like we were in the second half the other night for four quarters.